If you're thinking about improving your erections by starting Kegel exercises, you might want to think twice. What many men don't realize is that Kegels can actually make your problems worse. Instead of making you rock hard, you could end up with something more like a limp noodle. The reason? One key factor determines whether Kegels will help or harm you. And it's not what you think. As a board certified urologist and sexologist with years of experience, I've seen this issue countless times in my patients. Stay tuned to find out if you're one of the men who should avoid Kegel exercises altogether. I think generally it is a good thing that men have begun to appreciate the pelvic floor. It used to be a region with a very, let's say, feminine touch to it. But this has changed, luckily. Men now want to keep their pelvic floor in shape too, which is good. However, Kegel exercises for everybody is a big mistake. Most men don't have weak pelvic floor muscles. There's nothing to strengthen here. It's rather the opposite. Many men have an overactive pelvic floor. I know because I have performed thousands of rectal examinations. I find more tight pelvic floor muscles in my patients than weak ones. In younger men, a weak pelvic floor is rare. However, overactivity may present as weakness. This is what many men don't understand. Let's have a look at how muscles work. We are looking at skeletal muscle here, not smooth muscle. Skeletal muscle works by having a range of motion. When it is not working, it is relaxed. When it is contracted, it shortens. Overactive muscles are shortened permanently. They are unable to relax. This means that overactive muscles have a hard time contracting because they are contracted already. In the pelvic floor, this may appear as weakness. So what do you think will happen if you increase the tension in these muscles by Kegel exercises? It will worsen your problems because you will become even tighter and your erections will not become stronger but weaker. If you want to engage in pelvic floor strengthening exercises, you must get a pelvic floor examination first from someone who is trained at looking for pelvic floor overactivity. This will typically be a physiotherapist, but only go to those who have specialized in this part of the body. The next step will then be to check whether you will be able to activate your pelvic floor at all. There's a chance you don't know how to do it. Research has shown that 25 to 40 percent of men have no clue how to make these muscles contract and relax. It corresponds to my clinical experience. Many men squeeze their butt, thighs or abs instead. In women, it is even worse. Up to 50 percent don't know how to activate their pelvic floor. The first step in any pelvic floor exercise program will be to make sure you can move these muscles. Physiotherapists can help you with that. Now, there are men who will have effects from pelvic floor strengthening exercises. These are typically men in their 70s or after radical prostatectomy for prostate cancer. Obesity is a risk factor for both pelvic floor weakness and pelvic floor overactivity. I will do a separate video on this. Typical risk factors for pelvic floor overactivity include bad posture, prolonged sitting, chronic stress and emotional overload, incorrect breathing, heavy lifting like squats and deadlifts and others. So should you suffer from pelvic floor overactivity, you will have to perform relaxing exercises. These will help you to regain a full range of motion in your pelvic floor muscles. Apart from that, Shock waves are very effective in tackling any kind of pelvic floor overactivity. For more details about this intriguing therapy that has no side effects, watch the videos from this playlist. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.